Over $69,000 in comic sales in the last seven days took place at above the 12-month average, if not broke records this week. That's $20,000 more than we saw last week in sales. And this number one slot, whoo, that came out of nowhere. I did not expect that. Let's hit him with number 10 and get into this thing. Number 10 on the list is, whoa, what's going on? New Mutants 98. It's fallen from grace. It's almost leaving the hot 10. And it's all because of the 9.8. We'll get to it because over $8,000 in sales for the first appearance of Deadpool took place publicly this past week on the internet and across 20 different sales exceeded the recent 12-month average. We're going to hit you with some of the highlights. The 9.2, three copies outsold the 12-month average, the highest for 386, an increase of 4%. The 9.4, four copies outsold the 12-month average, the highest being for 550, an increase of 32%. And the 9.6, whoa, also sold for $550 at its height. The same as a 9.4. That tells me that either some members are getting some deals or some are overpaying because they're super excited about Deadpool. And seven copies sold at a 9.6 above the recent 12-month average, the highest for a 6% increase but no 9.8s. That's why this book's at number 10, at the bottom of this list. Two weeks in a row, we haven't seen a 9.8 sale above the 12-month average, but you know what we did see? A 9.8 sale below $1,000. This book went for $965. Now, I thought $1,100 was where you should be buying this book. $900 now? I think you have to pull the trigger at $900. There's been nine new 9.8s that hit the census in the last seven days. I told you so. That's a lot of nines, but coming in number nine is Uncanny x number 251, classic Mark Silvestri cover. Let's look at some of these numbers here on this book because we have four new record-breaking sales, an 8.5 sold for $158. That's up 177%. The 9.4 is up 69%, and the 9.6 sold for $258. That's up 22%. And of course, we can't forget about the newsstand. The 9.6 sold for $300. That's up 122%. As of a week ago, this book was higher on the list. It's a very common book. We're still seeing it move, but I'm sure some of the interest is waning after the movie. And that's not all. Our first 9.8 sale on this list came from this book. We saw it sell for $325. That's up 62%. On top of that, four copies in 9.8 outsold the average. Do you think this book will be here next week, or is it falling off like New Mutants 98 May? Let us know in the comment section below. And also, download Key Collector Comics. We source these hot 10 books from the list that comes out every single week. And if you use code TOM101, you unlock a free two-week subscription of the app in its entirety. But we're talking like the specialty lists, the stuff that is going to help you on the hunt, that may help you make some money, helps you be a little bit more savvy when you're going through those long boxes. But all the rest of the categories, the key information, the breakdown of reading order on characters and main events, all that's for free for you to check out. And it's available for both Androids and iPhones. And you can help support the show. Number eight on the list is Hulk number one. The first appearance of Red Hulk. It's been on this list every week since that first trailer dropped. And it hasn't come off. But it is dropping. It's at number eight. Let's look at the numbers. The 9.4 had five copies outsell the 12-month average for an increase of 36% on the high end, selling for 150. The 9.6, six, six copies outsold the 12-month average, the highest for 182, an increase of 34%. There was a Wizard World 9.8. That variant had three copies outsell the recent 12-month average for the highest being 190. That's an increase of 11%. And then there's the Hero Initiative variant. 9.8, one copy sold for 380, an increase of 14%. But wait, there's more. We're looking at the standard, direct, 9.8, first appearance of the Red Hulk. The highest it sold for was 375 this past week for an increase of 41%. And 10 different copies outsold the 12-month average in seven days. That puts this at nearly $6,500 in sales for this modern book that came out in 2008 across a total of 32 publicly recorded sales. Seven new 9.8s have been added to the CGC census in the last week. This book hit above $700 in grade. So this book is definitely down, but it's more affordable. And with the hype, this movie is out in about six months. Will it maintain despite that increase of census count? Or is it going to kind of level out at where it is? That's the question. Number seven, Fantastic Four Annual Number Two, a book that I've touted on here already a couple times. Uh, Origin of Doctor Doom. We saw 6,500 in sales. Three of them are year high sales. Let's jump into these numbers and take a look at what we've been getting from this book. 
Year high sale for four O's, three hundred dollars up nineteen percent. A year high sale for five 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 ten. That's up twenty three percent. And the year high sale of a seven five is up nineteen percent for a total of one thousand and eighty one dollars. We also were lucky enough to see an eight point five sell for thirty five hundred dollars. That's up sixty two percent. Now you can download Key Collector Comics. You can be up on the convention panels and figuring out like what's Marvel going to do. Or apparently, you could just be up on Fortnite. <laughs> no, that's not that's serious talk right there. Because my True. son's on Fortnite, and from what I understand, the season's called Absolute Doom. So, like, if we're looking at some of these characters they're presenting us, they have Gwenpool, Black Panther, Captain America. They got War Machine. I mean, I mean, we might not know what Marvel's doing, but Fortnite might have a clue. Why else would they put Doctor Doom in Fortnite unless they knew that it was coming? Looking at the list at number six. Whoa. Shout out to the Comic Sensei. He called it. Russ Bright, our LCS owner. We have Fantastic Four number 57 from 1966. Jack Kirby, classic Doctor Doom cover. Early Silver Surfer Doctor Doom. Yo, you got that glorious pinup of Doctor Doom acquiring the power cosmic. If that's not reason enough to buy and add this book to your PC or spec on it because of Doctor Doom keys being hot as hell, I don't know what is. $1,800 worth of monies have moved this last week on this comic book alone. Loan, eight sales and one year high. And I think this is one of those books that's going to be considered a repeater beater because <laughs> Hold on repeater beater. I've never heard this, Jeff. No, I'm going to call. Look, I'm going to phrase this repeater beater because we had Avengers 25, which was a repeater, right? OK. And what was the beater? Oh, this book beat that book. You're right. I think this book is taking this place. We're talking like apples to apples around the same time frame, same characters. It feels like that book is off the list. This is on it. This is our repeater beater. Oh, man. Let us know what you think about repeater beater in the comment section below. But this book absolutely did. And we're not going to report on all the sales. Here are some of the highlights. Key collector for all of them. We'll kick you off with a year high sale. 6.5 selling for $275, up 53%. The 7.0 selling for $295, up 43%. The 7.5 sold for $300, an increase of 19%. And the 8.0 sold for $350, an increase of 9%. Coming in at 5.5 is a huge announcement for the Mystery Mail Call. And let me show you, Jeff, the one per box in the Mystery Mail Call this month. All right. Boom. Miko Swayan. This book? This freaking book. This Everyone's is in your it. Mystery Mail Call box. Comic-Time101.com, yeah. This is crazy. This is the 316 homage. This is ASM 316, alt perspective, from the view, the reflection of Venom's eyes. This is a beautiful book. Whether you like the artist, whether you like Tom, I don't care. You're going to love this book. Join the community. Support the show directly. We send you some dope comic books. And I'll tell you, on Sunday, I'm dropping a banger in this box. We're saving the announcement. It's huge. It's probably going to be one of the best books we've released all year. It will likely sell out the box. Go secure your box now is what I'm telling you. And let's move on to number five on the list with Marvel Super Hero Secret Wars number eight. And... A 9.8 Mark Jeweler just set a record. Finally, I can get excited about this book because I just saw what a 9.8 sale was, and it's about exactly where I think you should be to be buying this book. Okay, my confidence meter on this was pretty low, but at this number now, I think I'm at about an 8 out of 10. Can I spoil it for them? Because I called it last week. I said this book may approach or be a sub $500 book. And I'll warn you, there is no 9.8 direct market copy to report on, which means that there's none that exceeded the recent 12-month average or broke records. The last GPA for a 9.8 was $492. That's why I got to hit the subscribe button. And I'm not here to crash a book. I'm just letting you know we had 13 9.8 sales in this one week since last reported. Okay? That's a lot, dude. Not a book you shouldn't buy because we just saw 27 sales that beat the 12 month average or were a record high for this book. I'm just gonna hit you with some of the highlights. And I'm not talking about those blonde tips that Fire Guy Ryan has. I'm talking about the amount of copies that sold, all right? We saw three copies that outsold the average in 9.4. One for 265, up 27%. There was a new stand sale in the 9.4 for 376, that's up 41%. That's a year high sale. 11 copies outsold the average in a 9.6 with a $300 sale up 16%, and three 9.6 newsstands outsold the average, with one hitting 450 up 19%. We have two different Mark Jeweler record-breaking sales to report on. The first in a CGC 9.0, last selling in March of this year for $600, up 11%, now with an all-new high of 668 
And then we have a 9.8 Secret Wars 8 Mark Jewelers last sale this year, February, for $5,850, up 20% for an all-new record high of $7,000 for the first time in comic collecting history. And get this, it was graded in August. This month, this is a fresh, brand new ghost that has emerged. If Marvel is wise, which sometimes I question, I think we will still see the flash in the pan moment when Tom Holland, Spider-Man, is in that cover pose of receiving the symbiote. Maybe three years from now, maybe sooner. But we have Venom on its third movie now, okay? So if I know Sony, it's one, two, three, we're done. So I can see the, the transfer of this symbiote going from one Tom to the other Tom here. They're going to pass the infected torch. I mean, this right here could be a moment where we get a new Venom, kind of lining that up. One thing that is curious is that the prior Venom films were filmed in San Francisco, like, you know, the actual narrative. We know, based on trailer, that there's some shots that they did in New York. Are they setting up a Tom Holland crossover? Is this all going to happen in three months where he receives the symbiote and it's kind of lackluster? Or will he receive it in the next Spider-Man film or Secret Wars? This hurts me to come in at number four because this is my favorite book on the list. Iron Man number one. And not just because it holds a special place in my heart because this was supposed to be my gift when I was 12 years old. It was $60 at a comic shop. I saw it the week prior and I brought my grandma and it was freaking gone. So I ended up with some stupid Nintendo game, probably Final Fight I think is what it was. But instead, I don't have this book from that memory. This is a big premiere issue. It's the first ongoing title series featuring Iron Man. And it's just classic and awesome. I always loved this cover. This is a great time in Marvel because we saw a lot of great books come out of it with Iron Man 1, Submariner 1, Captain America 100, all right, Hulk 102. So this is an important book on top of just a spectacular cover. So let's take a look at these numbers because other people are recognizing that as well. Yeah, over $8,800 in sales above the 12-month average. And we're talking seven different sales. This is an expensive book, Peep Key Collector, for all the sales. But we have a 6.5 up 27% selling for 8.40, and 8.5 up 10%. That's a year high selling for 16.83. The 9.0 is up 1%. But yo, it sold for $2,400. And then what's this? We got a Savannah Pedigree 8.0 that just set records because these books never come out. They're essentially a one of one because they're from a pedigree. Last sold in 2011 for 448, now selling for 1544 for that extra special copy from that collection, an increase of 245%. Now you might wonder, hey, it's a pedigree. Why did it not sell for more in comparison to the 8.5 that sold for $1,680? That's because of the 64 to 65 pedigrees there are. This is one of the largest that started in the 1950s, okay? And the guy collected till I believe the mid 90s. Um, so when we're looking at this pedigree, it isn't one of the most illustrious because there are actually quite a few now, but it's still a pedigree. It comes with that special gold label you get, which is really cool. And really this book in Edo or higher, is just spectacular to look at. I think this is cool because it's an origin issue. And I think people really vibe with Tony Stark's origin. I mean, just look at Iron Man 1, where he had to like put together his armor for the first time in those caves after being captured. Well, there's an all new Iron Man coming out in the pages of comics very soon. We have Spencer Ackerman and Julius Ota. You know them from Helverine. And you have Tony Stark being a badass, but having to rebuild his armor, unlike any ways he's done in the past over the course of this series. So he's not coming out the gate as full-blown Iron Man. No, he's coming at it like he used to. So if you like the origin vibe, this is like a fun take on a new Iron Man tale. I'm down for a new but similar take on his history. Okay, Because we're going to get, as Marvel quotes, when the best of his own technology fails him, Tony will build a brand new armor unlike any scene in his over 60-year history. That is a massive statement and gets me really sucked in to find out what they're doing for the story arc. He's going to rebuild it over the course of the series. So this is nothing like we've seen with Iron Man. I'm definitely going to be picking it up. I mean, yo, you got the Helverine artist alone. That right there should be the only thing you need to hear. Number three on the list is Uncanny X-Men 94. Okay, so you said Iron Man was your favorite book on this list. I'll tell you right now, X-Men 94 is my favorite book on this list. Confidence meter is high is what I'm saying. Over $4,000. In sales have taken place in the last seven days on this book, and it's only across seven different sales. But here's the thing. This book, I think, is undervalued. 
and it can still go up. The mutants are coming. And the next era, according to Kevin Feige, is going to be very mutant heavy. And I think the purchases are proving that investors and speculators are betting that this book is going to pay off. I think we all have to understand, and I believe most of us do, that the market has dropped to such a point that when you get an opportunity to buy a key like this, you pull the trigger. Because I think in about two to three years, we're all going to look back at this should have been a time that we were buying. We have a 6.5 recording its year-high sales selling for 5.92. That's an increase of 20%. How does a 6.5 going for 5.92 feel right now? I feel like that's a pretty good price for this book. Let's talk about a key. I mean, how much are you going to put towards one? For $600, you can get a 6.5 of a massive book in this title series. Let's talk about X-Men not being good and having to go to reprints. That's what we're talking about. X-Men was a failing title. They went from reprints from issue 67 to 93. And only from issue 94, with the grace of Chris Claremont and Dave Cockrum, we got unbelievable storytelling, unbelievable artwork, new characters, and we're just crushing it from then on. Yo, this book is selling at near $100 a point right now. The 7.5, you can get for $700. That's what someone paid for it, an increase of 5%. And the 8.5 went for $1,173. It's been about 1000 bucks all year. It's up 10%. And like most books, we see the $100 a point, but then there's an escalation, right? You hit like a, an 8.5 or a 9.0, and you start getting to another echelon because of the scarcity of it. You need to be watching X-Men 94. I definitely think this book has a lot of room to grow. It seems like such a safe investment while we move on to number two. But before we do that, Jeff, where can they find you on Instagram? If you want to find me, find me on Instagram. Find me on TikTok, both Golden Age Guru. I'm there to connect with you. You can send me messages. You can enjoy the content I put out there because usually I'm just having a good time with the hobby. And if you ever want to tune in for a sale, I also sell them there on our IG claim sales. It's a lot of fun. I've joined you on those claim sales before. You host them. Russ will break out his comics from the LCS. My dad will drive up from Montana to join us. It's a whole lot of fun. And don't underplay your creative in the memes that you do. This guy will straight up do characters. He's like dressing up as people. Like It's hilarious. I like to collab a lot of those posts because people love them. Go follow Golden Age Guru. I'll put the link in the description in these videos for you. We already do it. Number two on the list is the first appearance of Shut Up All. We have Silver Surfer number one. Another premiere issue on a horrendously tough book. Would you say that this book is tougher in high grade than any other premiere issue? Whoa, that's a good question. Um, I mean, like going through them real quick yeah. off the cuff. Is there anything tougher with that? Thick, square-bound, black silver server? My initial instinct, and I think it's accurate, is no. With that square-bound, always having issues with tears and spine splits, I don't think there is a harder premiere issue than that. Between a low seven sales, over $8,800 has traded publicly for this comic book, proving that while everyone's shopping Doom covers from the modern to silver age, people have not forgotten about the cosmic surfer. A lot of vintage on this list. So like I'm saying, people are starting to bite and pick up some of these keys before they start escalating to other levels that I'm sure we're going to be bouncing back to in about two to three years. Well, to start us off, we have four year high sales that took place in the last seven days. Let's kick it off with the 4.0 up 26% for $512. The 4.5 sold up 20% for $525. The 6.5 up 50% at $1188. We saw a 7 sell for 1900 That's 72% higher. And the 9 up 3%, but went for $3,799. These are some strong numbers and great to see for this underappreciated black cover square bound book. But we did see two more 9 just hit the census, 192 and 194. That's pretty impressive in only 30 days. Like, CGC be cranking out some stuff, but also I can imagine people hunting these books down, cracking, pressing, or just straight up submitting them for the first time. I mean, there's a lot of people who just own this book in their PC. Yeah, and they're not really extremely rare in 9 and above, but they're still coveted and absolutely spectacular to own in a 9-2 or higher. It's already confirmed we're going to get Shala Ball as some form of Silver Surfer. And will we get a second, as Nor and Rad might also get the Power Cosmic? Who knows? But cover the basis, get both those characters in here. It's an origin story. You get both of them in. And 
Also, think of it as a left and right shoe because Nike is re-releasing the Dunk Low Silver Surfers. So you can have Shyla on your left and you can have Norn on your right or vice versa. There you go. That's right. There's going to be this uh, shoe that they're bringing back from 2004, and it's got Silver Surfer on the inside soles and a metallic finish on the mesh. I'm not a shoe guy, but I may need to be. I think you need to be. I don't think I'm going to be. <laughs> All right. Hit the like, slot, the subscribe button. The number one hottest book in the world. Absolutely shocking. I mean, we just listed a bunch of blue chip books. X-Men 94, Silver Surfer 1, Iron Man number 1, and the number one hottest book in the world came out in 1988. McFarlane, Incredible Hulk 340. Damn it, we have Deadpool at number 10 and Wolverine at number one. What does that mean? I mean, these two bookends for this list are absolutely telling. And it's even more telling is that there were 32 sales for this book above the 12-month average, okay? And no 9.8s for the New Mutants 98, and none for the Incredible Hulk 340. Incredibly impressive because this book has been trending well since Deadpool Wolverine. Seeing the shot, you know, briefly on screen, hyped this book up even more. But this book was already hype. This book was already very much wanted. And I think because of how much more it was wanted than New Mutants 98, like for standard collectors and people who are hunting for books, that that's why we're seeing such a discrepancy, a difference between both of these keys. and despite there being four new 9.8s in the last week and four new 9.6s added to the census in the last seven days. Let's jump into the numbers because we have three year-high sales to report on. The first is a 7.5 selling for 155, up 29%. Then we have an 8.5. Five copies outsold the recent 12-month average, the highest for $205, an increase of 24%. We have three 8.5 newsstands that sold above the 12-month average, the highest for 200, an increase of 18%. And four 9.0s outsold the 12-month average, the highest for 310. That's a year high for an increase of 64%. The new stand 90 also had a year high. We saw three new stand 90 sell above the average, and one hit $250. That's up 20%. There were five 94s that sold above the average that were direct, and one sold for $295. That's up 25%. There were five 96 directs that sold above the average with a high of $400. That's up 18%. What do you think about Incredible Hulk 340 being the hottest book in the world? What do you think about New Mutants 98 about to fall off? Are any of these other Deadpool books going to maintain? We want to hear your thoughts and, as always, geek responsibly. Enough said.